just attack the basket. James catches, puts up the three. Won't go. Rebound box. Back out to Allen. His three point of the Welcome to the Ultimate Super Coach and Fantasy Sports Show. You are now listening to the Insight Fantasy Sports Podcast. Boom shakalaka! Hello, Hoopers. I am at NBA G Wiz, and welcome to an Insight Fantasy Sports Insight NBA podcast. This is a special edition. And joining us today is at Adam King, UK91. You can call him Kingy. From FBI Basketball. How you doing, Kingy? Uh, very good, mate. Enjoying my beer and just checking my WNBA fantasy scores for the day while we're while we're getting ready. How's things going in the WNBA for you this season? <clears throat> uh, good, good, actually. I've never done it before, but a uh, few of the other analysts asked me if I wanted to be part of it. So it's actually it's actually a good product, the WNBA. Um, I've been watching a lot more of it this season. There's there's nothing else to do. So my my Rugby league team sucks, so I don't watch them. Um, my <laughs> AFL team is just as frustrating, so I don't really watch them. So, And all we've got today is in latest news, James Harden isn't being traded and is going to return to camp because we're on the 13th of August here in Australia. Also joining me, NBA-wise, two of the most lovely gentlemen you can get on a pod. We've got SC underscore at Big Horse right there. Mickey Dell, how you doing, my man? Good, Jay, good. And like Kingy, well, my NRL team's pretty ordinary as well. And Essendon, we all know I support Essendon. They're, they've been shit. So let's talk NBA. <laughs> so I'm what Essendon also, as well. Oh. What a man. What, brutal. Also, there is a, a long suffering Kangaroos fan. We've got uh, the man Ooh. right there. His name is Jake Skidmore. Skiddy, you're a little bit, uh, you're fired up for a Sunday, mate. How's your weekend tracking? Yeah, mate, going really well. Uh, yeah, as you said, Kangaroos lost again, so no surprises there. But good to see Benny Cunnington off. That was a uh, ripping goal in the first, so I was happy with that. And then uh, massive shout out to our Matildas smacking those French buggers. Ooh. That was intense in that penalty shootout. So um, big shout out to the girls for getting through to the uh, to the eights. So fantastic work. And now I uh, can't wait to get stuck in to a beautiful uh, podcast with you, beautiful gentlemen. Now, this is a little bit of fun for everybody. I'm about to reveal to everybody today what we're going to call in here is the Fantasy Wheel of Draft. What you are about to see is an unseen wheel. Gentlemen, here you go. This is it. This is our 20 players that we are going to be drafting today in this all-out warfare we call Wheel of Draft. We have 20 players on this wheel, and we're going to talk about their ADPs, where they're currently shaken out. I have divided it into four categories. Our purple guys are our superstars here in the NBA. We've got Giannis, KD, Luca, Ja, and Ant-Man. Mick, who do you like there the most out of those guys? Good question. Probably from a consistency point of view, KD. All yeah, right. I well, think you have the- even, though, yeah, even though he's with Booker this year and he's got Beal as, as another sidekick and Aiton inside, uh, just over the past 10, 12 years, he's just been a model of consistency, not just from an NBA point of view, but from a fantasy point of view. Yeah, absolutely. In the uh, next case we have, we've got the sophomores. Now, these are the guys who I've put Kate in there. Uh, filthy. Will you forgive me? He didn't play last season, basically, all of 12 games. He's off. I've thrown in these are our second year lads. We've got Benedict Matherin, uh, J Dub, J Williams. Uh, Jabari Smith Jr., because you know I always love to give him a chance. Benedict Matherin and Cade Cunningham. Who stands out there for you, mate? Uh, well, Benedict Matherin twice, that stands out for me, but um, <laughs> that's all right. Uh, yeah, so I did. I'll fix that up. Yeah, that's all right. No, all good. Um, yeah, I'm interested to see how J-Dub's going to bounce back, for, uh, bounce in from last year. Uh, obviously, it was an amazing season from the second half, so I'd love to see 100%. if he can keep that up. But obviously, most uh, excited for Cade and hopefully – um, he can stay healthy and really um, really show what he was about to do, uh, what we all thought he was going to do last year. And uh, when a lot of people took him around that top 20 mark, um, yeah, I'd love to see him be able to put in a really good fantasy season this year. Oh, yeah, 100%. You really want good things for him. Uh, in our next little uh, area, we've got some rookies. We've got Asoa Thompson. We've got Chet Holgren, Victor Wembanyama, Scoot Henderson, and Brandon Miller. Who there tickles the fancy of you, King? You straight off the rip. Um, well, it's going to depend what these ADPs are, but 
I would. Uh, I don't know. I like. There's probably a couple that I don't mind. There, it's more guys that I don't like, and I don't. I don't want Brandon Miller. <laughs> Any yeah. of the yeah, other yeah. guys, I'd be okay <laughs> with, but I don't want Brandon Miller. Probably Chet. I like Chet. Maybe, maybe you'll get some value. Who knows where he falls? And in the last one, we've got the glue guys, the guys who you can say, are the guys who you want to pick up in your draft, maybe a little bit under the radar just because they don't have the name or they've re-signed contracts, a new situation presents to them this season. Like Bradley Beal, Bruce Brown, Josh Giddy. We had to put an Australian in there, obviously, being four Australian blokes in there. We want to see who gets kids. We've got Josh Hart after that big contract re-extension uh, over there in New York. And Derek White are our guys. I have the... The ball, Skitty, you remember these from our rookie draft? Um, Kimmy, you're our guest. You're our guest. You will get the number one ball. Um, Skitty, the number two ball. Uh, Horsey, you're the three ball. And I'm the four ball. Uh, we'll take out our draft order and get this sorted straight away. No, I'm not giving myself the first one. That's just too rigged. Number four is too rigged. I'm going to give it to someone else to start off with. No, I guess has got to get it. That's not on. That's not on. Number three. There we go. I can't do that. I can't take the number one pick off straight away. Three. All right. That's you. So Mick Dell will get the number one pick will be Mick with the second pick. I'll put myself back in. Yep. That is number two. That is number two. That is you, Jake. You're going to be the okay. second victim. I mean, participant. Oh, yeah. It's complicated, this ball shuffling. Oh, oh, me at number four. So me is the three pick. And Kingy, you get the fourth pick. Might want to use that right. video early. Yep. Not that I had to do it for the number one, here, Kingy. You know, we, we get this, you know, this great man here that does such great fantasy work, and we just go, you know what, stuff your fourth pick straight away. Welcome to Insight, baby. Let's go. Fourth is All fine. All right, now. <laughs> fourth is fine. Fourth is fine. Fourth is fine. So how this plays out, ladies and gentlemen, is this. None of the players apart from me know the ADP that I am going to give. So we're going to spin the wheel randomly. It will land on a player. I will give you a pick. So, for example, the first pick might be KD, where the wheel is right now. And I say, congratulations with the first pick. Mick, you've landed on KD. I'm giving you draft position of, let's say, number six. Do you take him or do you trade him? If you wish to keep KD at the sixth pick, you take. If you wish to trade it, he can select any one of the dudes in this chat right now and give them the pick. The caveat is this. Whoever that player lands on, Mick absolutely has to take when it lands on him. So the trade is not guaranteed to bring you back value. You're just going to get whatever player that lands on. Even if you wanted them, they are going the way of the dodo. All make sense? Yep. Let's do it. Good. Let's do it. Here's one more kicker. Everyone today for a special treat because of you, Kingy, gets one gold veto. If there is a dude that you right. absolutely want on here, you can be like, hold a phone, hold up. I'm using my golden ticket, and you can take that player off the board for us. All right. Let's get down to it. The first pick going to you, McDell. We're spinning it. It is. Ah, Jabari Smith Jr. Oh, my. Mick, do you take or do you trade Jabari Smith Jr.? I will clean him from the board. What are you doing with him, my friend? I'm going to take him for you at the hundredth pick, though. Oh, you can keep well, him at the hundredth. Oh, you can keep him at pick one hundred, or you can trade Jabari Smith Jr. from the Houston Rockets. If you have the hundred, yeah, I'm going to. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to trade him. Okay, I'm going to trade him. Okay, and who are you going to trade him to? Let's trade him to Kingy. Ah, oh, shit. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, about. can you why, – why, why is it an oh shit for you for Jabari Smith Jr.? Oh, there's just other guys I want on the board rather than him. But, oh, look, I think I think he's going to be a lot better than he was last year. Um, he was pretty good – well, he was good at summer league. You'd, you'd hope he would be. Um, yep. And I think last year – oh, man, I'll have to pull it up. I think he was like 140th or something. 140th. Yeah, he oh. finished it. Yeah, yeah, he I've finished the, the year. Here. Yeah, go for it, man. So he finished the year as 158th ranked player. After the trade line, after the trade deadline, sorry, he improved a little bit uh, up to the 124th ranked player uh, with splits of he was 40 percent before the trade deadline. After the trade deadline, he improved that to 44 percent, 
uh, and improved from 12.8 to 14.7 points per game. He went up 0.6 rebounds to 7.8 boards a game, one and a half assists, 0.6 steals and 0.9 blocks. So, yeah, for me, I see better value at the 100 pick. All right. He has some upside maybe this year. Uh, it's it got, it's one of those guys who you want to be hurt with again. Um, mate, it falls then to you, Jake. So, Kingy, you have then on your team Jabari Smith Jr. Mick has a clean state. And that also means that Mick has completed one of his two absolutely mandatory assigned states. The colors shifted. I don't give a shit. We're just spinning. There we go. They're going to shift around, and I'm not going to bother fixing it. Oh, Derek White from the Boston Celtics. This is for you, Jake. If I was to yeah. say you were going to either take or trade Derek White in Boston this year with the 82nd pick, do you take or do you trade him at the 82nd? I'm taking Derek White there at 82. I'm, I think I'm a little bit higher on Derek White this year than some other people are. I know um, – Super Coach Matrix, Matty O'Brien, he's not that high on Derek White, but I do like the defensive um, stats that Derek White provides from a guard position. He's a very good blocker, a uh, good source of blocks and steals from it. So, um, And I think without Marcus Smart there, with the unknown of what's going on with Brogdon's injury, I don't think they have full trust in Pey Pey Peyton Pritchard. So I think White's going to get in excess of the minutes. Because uh, what was he on last year? I believe he was 20, was he 28? 28 minutes, minutes a night. 28, a night 20, 28. 28 nights, 28 okay. minutes a night. Yeah. Yeah, I can definitely see that coming up. Um, <clears throat> and like, you know, he doesn't hurt you in any, like in any categories with the free throw or the field goal percentage. Um, nice amount of threes. And if the points can come up a bit, I expect his assist to come up a bit as well. Um because we all know that Jalen Brown can't have any handles or passing, so that's fine. And, uh, yeah, if he keeps the defensive stats high, like, I think that's a fair spot for Derek White. I'm, I'm very happy to take him there. So I'm not going to use any of my trades, and um, you can all get stuff. I'm having Derek White. I really like that pick for you, Skitty, given yeah. for me especially, I love players that are consistent like Bridges in, in that they play every game or close to every game. And the fact that he played 82 games last year, yeah. that means you got points on the board every game. Yeah, and that was good for Derek White because he was part. He's had a bit of an injury plague, I guess. You, you never know what injuries are going to play yeah. into a, a guy's career, but it was good to see him bounce back after that trade and get a lot of minutes. Yeah, absolutely. Like, he right. had a toe injury a couple of years back, so I mean, I'm not worried about that. And you know, now that he's got rid of that bum fluff on his head, uh, hopefully he can uh, fly around the court a bit faster and everything. So let's go. Good on him. All right, wow. my turn for the third pick. Oh. Who am I getting? Ah, I'm getting Paolo Banquero. And I can tell you straight away, I know uh, I can share where I'm going to take him. I'm going to wipe him off the board for us first. Uh, Paolo Banquero in this draft has been suggested at the 52nd pick. I am trading him to you, Mikdell. I do not want Paolo Banquero on my team. I think there's a big opportunity. Like everyone says about their opportunity. I just, I don't see it this year. I, I just don't like his efficiency. For me, who, who like, who here is anyone here high on Paolo this season? So, so not that high. Uh, but I think like, you know, you can't really base off his uh, field goal percentages from his rookie year. It's, he's obviously got to work into the actual NBA and everything like that. I'm just not like, I'm a little bit higher than that, but not that high just because I'm not sure what else. Like, he gets the rebounds, a couple of threes, but can he expand his game a bit more and get some defensive stats and assists and everything like that? I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, I'm I'm unsure too. Look, after the trade deadline last year, you know, usually when the rookies kind of ramp it up a little bit and put that, you know, the gas down, I looked into him when I was doing some research for this. He finished the year, according to Hashtag Basketball, as the 168th ranked player overall. So I don't see him taking a jump 100 positions up for a start. Yeah. But after the trade deadline, according to them in their Cat League rankings... He actually finished after the trade deadline at 176. So he got worse than his as the season went on. And his field goal percentage, it went up. His free throw percentage went down. His threes went down. His points went down. The rebounds and assists went up. But his blocks and steals tapered off towards the end of the silly season as well. So I'm very happy, happily passing on Paolo. Where would you take him maybe in a 
fantasy draft this year, Kingy? Where would you look to take Paolo around, even generally? Oh, I'm not really targeting him, but not this high. Um, probably, I don't know. I mean, he's going to get you good numbers, but yeah, efficiency is a bit of an issue. Um, they've got a lot of guard depth, so I'm not sure, I'm not really sure his assist numbers can go up too much. Um, I don't know. I think around 100 for me, probably 90, something like that. Um, he's back into last season, so last month, I think it was six weeks, he had a neck injury. So that yeah. that was part of the reason that he he sort of fell off a little bit. He had, I think it was nerve damage or something in his neck. So yeah. um, I think yeah. he'll be better. Rookies are often better in their second season, but a little bit like Jabari Smith. I'd probably have him similar range to Jabari Smith, actually. So in that yeah. sort of 90, um, 90 to 100, something like that. Mm-hmm. Can I use my golden veto for this one? Oh, oh. <laughs> what like that? Oh, well played. There is no, there is um, no way I want this bloke on my team at fifty. Oh, I did not, I did not say that uh, you couldn't do a veto of your own. Um, oh, you son of a bitch! Yeah, you know what? Fine. I, I, I should have been clearer on the rules, Mick, and I reckon you just dodged a bloody bullet and you gave that to me, <laughs> and I hate you for it a little bit. And uh, thank you very much, uh, sir, for cooking me there. So, Kingy, this You're is uh, your turn then, I guess. Thank, yeah, thanks, Mick. Love you. <laughs> all right here we go oh ah here's a here's oh. one chet and i know we were talking off air before we came in here kingy that you said you know chet was one of the guys you were looking at um i'm gonna give you a range where he's gone he's gone all over the place you've done a lot of mock yeah. drafts kingy already mate he's going all over the shop isn't he tell us about it yeah he is yeah it sort of depends on who you're drafting with i think he's going i've seen him go as high as 30 and i've seen him go as low as 70 so uh yeah pretty pretty sort of wide um range in terms of his adp at the moment so i'll be interested to see what you're going to give me i'm going to give you there's a few little eager beavers in your draft room and i'm going to give you him at the 42nd pick do you take or do you trade i take <laughs> Yeah, there we go. So that means you've got two guys on your team already. You have uh, Chet, and by way of virtual trade, Jabari Smith Jr. What are you looking forward to seeing Chet play this year? What are, what are you looking forward to in his game, and what do you think he brings to OKC, Kingy? Um, well, I mean, defense is the obvious one. Shot blocking um, can handle the ball a little bit, hits some threes. Not a not a huge three point shooter, I think. I think if we'd seen him last year, it would have been a different answer. But OKC have improved immensely over the last 12 months. So Jalen mm. Williams is obviously great. Uh, Giddy has taken some pretty big steps forward. Shea is a franchise guy now. Um, Isaiah Joe is still there. He's, he's a nice little role player that they've got. So, so their roster is far better than it was 12 months ago. So I don't think uh, Chet will need to do as much. So I think – I actually think he'll – by way of not having to do as much, who might even play better because the pressure's not there for him to be the saviour. This, Here's Chet. He's going to save us. He's going to sort of um, make us competitive again. They're already there. So I think he's more of just a complementary piece now. And I don't know, probably 16 points, nine rebounds. They don't have a centre, really. Uh, mm. not, a, not a good centre anyway. So um, Yeah, not a good centre, I think, I think be- is the... Uh- is the optimal words there for yeah, you? Can you yeah. not a good center? They're going to roll out Jeremy, uh, Mr. Robinson Earl out there, and that's pretty much the depth chart. It is. It is, yeah. And look, if Chet, anyone who gets two blocks a game is going to be top 50. So um, I've just got a quick adding, one on that, Kingy. Um, yep. Do you reckon that the fantasy value of, say, these big centers that got a shitload of blocks last year, like Jaron Jackson, Miles Turner, uh, those kind of guys, uh, Brooke Lopez, like their fantasy value is kind of going to go down a little bit just because of how scarcity blocks was last year, and now we're bringing in like Webb and Yama, Chet, and everything like that, where the kind of the they get the big blocks that are expected to come, and the value of blocks are going to come down a little bit. Look, maybe slightly. I still think those high block guys are going to be a, a sort of elite in terms of mm. overall rank because rank obviously it skews things and and it's. Mm. Yeah, it's like, I mean, if you look at what Jaron Jackson was like 13th or something, yeah. almost first round. But yeah. you take out blocks and he's, uh, he drops back to like 60 or something, I think. Yeah, um, yeah he goes well down. Um, so, 
yeah, look, I mean, there are, with a few shop, locks, shop lockers coming in, um, it could impact that. Yeah, so Jaron Jackson goes from, well, I'm looking at the basketball monster ranks, but he goes from 13th to 73rd if you get yeah, rid of rocks. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, look, I think so. But and, and the way that the game now is is played, these elite shop lockers are so few and far between because yeah. the game is not played at the rim anymore, not not like it was 10 years ago. So we've seen it with Rudy Gobert. As soon as these guys lose some of that lateral mobility and they can't defend the perimeter, mm-hmm. their blocks go sort of fall way off. So young yeah. guys who can get blocks are going to remain, I think, elite. Um, and that's why Wembenyama, Chet, that's why they're so high in everyone's projections, I think. Yeah, cool. Absolutely. Hey, Mick, your pick again, it's your spin again, mate. I'm pretty sure we're back to you. Mate, is there one guy on this board that you're hoping for right now because none of the uh, the superstars have gone off? I'd love J-Dub. You'd love, love J-Dub? Well, oh, and uh, after the All-Star break last year, he was top 30 or 35, I believe. So, yeah. Yeah, he was a Give flyer, mate. I know, you, I, know, I know you were trying to – you actually traded for him in one of our leagues. Actually, I think you got I him did. from me in one of our leagues. Yeah, you did. So, let's see what we get on the wheel of draft. Ah, instead you're getting another big hustle stats guy. You are getting Josh Hart, who's just re-upped with the New York Knicks. If I was to give you Josh Hart, and bear, mind you, you have no players on your team right now. Uh, mm-hmm. You have the 90th pick to take Josh Hart. Do you take him or do you trade him? I'm taking him. One, because I need players on my team. But two, he was ranked 72 after the trade deadline. Uh, he, give, he gives you boards. He gives you seven, seven and a half boards a game, uh, 10 points. He, he likes to dish the rock too, almost four assists a game. Yeah, he's, his percentages from the field are pretty good too. So let's lock him in. Yeah, I like that for you. I reckon that's a really good pick. I reckon he's – I'm already looking at my draft board for the year and after that New York Knicks news, I'm definitely moving him down. I probably had him around the 100 zones. I'm probably just going to budge him up there a bit just because of what he does and the effort that he kind of got that New York player, Mick. I like, I reckon you're, I reckon you're spot on 1.2 steals a game. doesn't like 0.3 blocks, but the out of position rebounds for the guy to get yeah. almost eight rebounds a game that late in the draft. It's, it's value at the back end. It's, it's nice. Sta- it's nice. Pat, stab pat there. I like it a lot for you, Mick. For sure. Anyone got a, uh, anyone got a veto? No. Nope. Nope. All right. We're going to move it on then. This one is your next one, Mr. Skidmore. Any names I up know there that you want to have, mate? Is, just so everyone knows. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ooh. Luca. Luca, baby. Our first superstar on the wheel has been taken. I'm going to give you a chance to take Luca with the third pick this year. Do you take Luca at three? I don't, I don't know. I mean, I want the superstar, but I don't think I want him at three. Just I Yeah, you could get a high. superstar on the next one if you trade him away. That's all I'm yeah. saying. Like, it's a game. Like, yeah, who, like who do you want? Well, no, nah, because I think that's too high, so I'm going to trade him. Why do you think that's too high for Luca this year? I mean, look, Luca, Luca gets you, like, you know, the points. He gets you the rebounds. He gets you the assists. He gets you those triple doubles and everything like that. Triple double isn't a nine cat. Like category though, so I don't care about like the triple doubles. His steals need to come up. His blocks aren't great. His free throw percentage is what kills him because he gets to the line a lot. And for someone that shoots so well in every like all around the field and everything, like that, and it's such a good player. His free throws are at forty at seventy four percent and on big volumes. So that yeah. does hurt yeah. at the end of the day. So, I mean, I'm not like fully against like drafting Luca that high because obviously he has the potential and he's still young and everything. But I believe after Kyrie Irving came to town, um, his numbers dipped a little bit. Um, so <laughs> I like I like Luca. I like the Kyrie pairing with him. I don't think it like hampers him in like like a massive way. But I just don't think I would take him with the third pick. I'd more look at him, you know, maybe around like eight, seven kind of range. I think threes is a bit big because I could get better players there. So I'm going to trade him to the big horse. Yes. He Ooh. is going to be the garlic of my kebab this year. I love that. <laughs> Thank you. Wait, have you, have you seen video? Have you seen skinny Luca 
playing overseas at the moment. He yeah. is a he is a Rolls Royce, and for me, if I'm looking at punting turnovers and free throw percentage, beautiful player to have on my team. Love him. Oh, yeah, get him in. I can agree there, but I yeah, I'm not taking him with three. I'm going to veto oh, okay. it. I'm just going to take him to. I'm just going to golden veto it to 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 Kook Mick for doing that to Bancaro thing to me. Oh, I, so I have Luca. Uh, do I? No, you have oh. lost Luca. Be you. You said you wanted to trade him, didn't you, to Mick? Yeah. Yeah, well, he's no longer going there. He is being routed with my golden veto to my team. Oh, that's a right. spite one. That's a spite one. I'm using my veto to veto it. I'm taking Luca off just to get you back okay. for, for saddling me with Paolo Bancaro, Mick. So no garlic on my kebab. That's no sucks. garlic on your kebab. You could, I veto, veto, <laughs> could I veto your veto? <laughs> oh, oh, no. I don't want to. No, I don't want to. I was just curious whether you can. That, you can veto. You could. You could veto my veto. This could be a double could, veto no, situation. There's a, there's a guy on the board. I want. I want more. So I'm just doing yeah, that to spike because I really didn't want to get allowed. I did, I really didn't want to get labelled with Paolo and Mick didn't did me in. He did me in, horsey. Yeah. I did. <laughs> the horses. Uh, yes, the, the horses. Yes, sir. The horses struck. All right then. I guess it's back to. Uh, that was your pick. So he's off the board. So Jake, you've used one of your trades. I've used my veto as well. Uh, so it's my pick now um, on the board. Let's see what we come up with. Oh, I'm getting really shit spins. I have. I have Benedict <laughs> Matherin. Oh, I really didn't wish to. I did this. I've got Benedict Matherin as my spin that's come up on the wheel. I have put down Benedict Matherin with the 108th pick. He was one of the ones that I saw an increased roll with. I have put him down drafting at 108. I am going to use my last trade because I don't want Benedict at 108. I'm just unsure of his role there this year in Indiana. I think he could take a little bit of a leap up. Like I'm not against him so to speak, like I'm not like this anti-Benedict Matherin guy. Um, he did finish 190th overall last year, 164th after the break. He, I love how he gets to the line and he buoys my free throw percentage. I think for me, that's what I love the most about his game. Um, after the All-Star break, he was at five free throw attempts and he hits him at 84%. He gets me some points. He gets me some rebounds. He gets me little assists, but the, turn the turnovers and other stuff, that young player does my head in a little bit. So I just don't want him there. And I also think with Bruce Brown coming to Indiana, who's also on the board, that the same – like I see similar performance. You're not in your head there, Mick. Do you see a similar thing with Brucey Brown being in Indy? Yeah, I do. A absolutely, I do. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to have yeah. to trade this one um, to you, Jake. Skitty, I'm trading him to you. Benedict Matherin. Uh, oh, I hate that. that it really sounds like he's yeah. happy with it. Hey, he's nah. not very happy about that at all. Nah, can I? Nah, bugger it. No, nah, you can't else. veto your own one. You, can, you, oh, you got see, that's the thing. You got someone else. So I guess you that moves it straight to you, then, Kingy. Yeah, I'm doing it. Yeah, we're not, we're not doing that again. That's just a waste. No, of, we're, doing we're not it. doing that. No, we're not doing it. <laughs> we're not doing it. Oh, look, it's too late. It's spinning for Kingy. It's spinning for Kingy. Here we go. She's making up as again. That looks very yellow. Ah, Jade up. <laughs> Woo. Oh, that's all. Here he is. It is. It's just over the line on J-Dub. And I've used my golden veto already, so I can't do this. This is an interesting one. This is, a, I think, a contentious player this year in the draft. I was very adamant early. We're saying there's going to be a lot of yahoos just jumping. like, Oh, he's so good last year. He's so good last year. And just wanting to draft him so, 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 so high. I've got him here, Kingy, for you at the 60th pick. Do you take J-Dub at 60 or do you trade J-Dub? Who's on my team? Jabari and Chet. Uh, and I've got yeah, you've got Jabari and Chet. And you've got to use two, two trades. You've got to use two trades. Um, yeah, all right. Oh. On that while you think, I'll let you think about it because I've used both of mine. Mick, you've used one trade. Jake, you've used one trade. Uh, Mick's used his veto and I've used my veto, by the way. Okay. Uh, 60th. Um, and who's left? What's going through your thoughts? Uh, yeah, at, yeah, six, yeah. At, the 60, at, <laughs> at the 60th pick, what are you thinking about Jalen Williams this season? What does he represent? Bit of fact around it. He finished the season last year as the 74th ranked player. After the deadline, he obviously went crazy. 
moved himself down to the 30th after the trade deadline. Uh, he was like everybody's fan favorite. He was like even touted at one stage possibly to be the rookie of the year, Kingy. Do you, yeah. do you take him? Um, yeah, look, I think I probably do. Uh, yeah, all right, yeah, I'll take him. Oh, Mick is the sad boy. He just wants that garlic, <laughs> garlic for the kebab. Come on, mate. Yeah, I think this is about right. I, I wouldn't yeah. – I've seen him. Uh, I mean, what what was the data I sent to you? Um, so he's going at about fifty seven in our leagues. Um, yeah, yeah. I think that feels about right. Uh, with Chet there and um, Giddy a bit better, all that all that stuff. I do think he he'll be overdrafted in a few spots inside the top fifty, but sixty, I'm okay. Um, that's sort of what's that back into the fifth round? Fifth in, round, in a, yeah. In yeah. a standard draft, yeah. So fifth, yeah. sixth round. So. Yeah, I'm okay there. He's going to be good in steals, um, which is sort of what I need. I've got blocks. Uh, I've got rebounds. I don't have much steals or many steals. So, yeah, look, I'll take him. Why not? I like Mick's reaction. Mick, you hung your head there. You really love Jalen Williams. What do you think about him? Like, I mean, as a basketball player, but what did he do, what did he do for you and your fantasy team last year? Because we both owned him and loved him. What do you think he brings yeah. this year? Uh, steals was a big one. Assists, field goal percentage. You take smart shots. I, I love the player. Like he's a he's a s- small ball point guard, or or a, like if you're running a big unit. Sorry, he could play point guard. So I know his his uh, percentages went up, then his usage went up when SGA wasn't there. But as Kingy was just saying, is his usage going to go down with now SGA full time there? Josh Giddy, you got Chet back in the lineup now. Does that mean he sees less of the ball now? From a defensive point of view, I think his numbers stay the same. But from a not so much field goal percentage, but from a points per game point of view, I think his numbers dip a little. Yeah, yeah, he's not I'm a right high usage guy. So yeah. uh, if he's if he yeah if he doesn't have the ball in his hands as much, yeah. he's still going to get you some rebounds, assists, um, and steals, yeah. as we saw. Like I think he led the league. Well, maybe not led the league, but he was top three or something. He was high. Uh, yeah, over the point. I, I, think, I think Delon Wright actually led the league um, yeah. over the final two months or something, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no. I'll, I'll take him. Oh, I'll take him. just one more before we move on from him, um, G. So, yeah, Kimmy, do you see him? Do you see him running the second unit at OKC? Uh, I th- at times, yes. Um, yep. I mean, I think he starts. So, I, I think he 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 starts the game. But I think they may then sort of sub him off. They have got Casey Wallace as well, who they drafted, mm-hmm. who who mm. can run the second unit. So, um, but. Uh, as you said, um, Williams showed last. I think he had a few, at least one or two double-digit assist games. Yeah, he did last season. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, as you said, if if they want to go, if they want to go big, they can play him there. Um, Shea can play off the ball as well. So mm-hmm. it could be. Yeah. Look, I think they've got a very versatile lineup now they in do. OKC. So there is a chance that he spends time at the point. Yeah. I know we've talked about this off air just as mate Skitty. You love just your OKC is locked in as an absolute league pass team for you this year, aren't they? Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. I'm very, very excited to see uh how this OKC team works. I mean, it's there's a lot of depth to it too. Shea's amazing. So uh yeah, there'll be definitely something that I'm gonna be keeping my eye on all the year this year. Not to mention Josh Skitty. S- so I guess at the end of our third round, teams are shaking out like, oh, second round, here we go. Teams are shaking out like this. Uh, Mick only has one bloke. <laughs> He's got Joshy Hart. Great foundational nice. piece right there. Jake, you've got Derek White Jr. Uh, sorry, Derek White. Uh, you've got Benedict Matherin. <laughs> I've got Paolo. I'm just throwing Jr. around everywhere. I've yeah. got uh, Paolo <laughs> Bancaro and uh, Luca. And Kingy, you've got uh, Jabari Smith Jr., Chet Holgren, and J-Dub. So it's back to you, Mick Dell. And you can't tr- – oh, you got one trade left up your sleeves and you got one trade left and Ant-Man has arrived knocking at your proverbial door and he says, hello, big horse, will you please take me with the 18th pick in the draft? <laughs> yes. Why? Because I beat what- players. <laughs> I, I just – I like him. I, I really like him. And alongside um, Michael Conley there – I think that's a good mature head to, to sort of teach him a little bit more of the fundamental side of basketball. I, I don't like the fact that um, Towns and Gobert are still going to be in the starting lineup. 
that sort of limited his productivity early last year and he boomed at the back end of the year. But, you know, he was the 37th ranked player last year, the 55, 55th ranked player after the draft. Um, uh, sorry, after the deadline. But I see, again, a big uptick in, in production from him, 24 points a game. Five boards, four assists, 1.4 steals, 1.1 blocks. Does a bit of everything. Yeah, I'm keeping him if no one wants him, which no yeah, one Yeah, can I bet no one take him? Oh, oh, Arian Skinny. <laughs> Mix needs some players. Can I, can I take him? No. Actually, can I just say no? Because no one no. can. He actually is coming right. onto my team because uh, I vetoed that trade to get Luca, which means no matter what, I had to get the, you actually already routed him. So, Jake, you actually – no, you what? can't. He actually stays – no, he stays there. I was going to reroute him. No, he stays with Mick there. You absolutely pick up him on that pick. So, Ant-Man, he cannot be vetoed because that was a pick because the next pick that he picked up was after mine. You can't take him. You can't veto it. Ant is with you, Mick. Do you see a pathway where those minutes, those roles and everything that he brings to the table really does go up because he gets traded? Yes, and I'm sorry, Skitty, but he's mine, boy. <laughs> man, oh, oh, he's, man. He's a, yeah, he's he's someone that's going to fill or stuff Eddie every category, including turnovers. But who knows? We may punt them. Uh, All star this year for me. Really nice player and takes third uh, year in the league. Takes a big jump this year. Yeah, he's right. like his pathway to get higher isn't like that hard to see either. Like if he he can get his points per game up and his usage up because Conley's not. Like a massive a no, score or anything like that. So, um, if they all buy into its ants team, uh, I can definitely see it being uh, being up a bit as well. Yeah, hundred percent, mate. Here we go. Next up, then Skitty. Let's see if you can get one of the boys you want. Who are you hoping? Who are the fingers crossed for? Anyone but Jar or him. Well, oh, <laughs> but maybe, but maybe he'll represent value for you, sir. Yes, you have landed on one Bradley Beal, new acquisition for the okay. Phoenix Suns. I have him down in this draft. Now, he's been ranging quite a lot, actually. Uh, yeah. Background for you on Brattles. Can we call him Brattles? Let's call him Brattles. Um, the X rank on the new Yahoo X ranks is at 61. His rank is at 86. I'm going to throw you a bone and give him the 57th pick to you. Bradley that Beal. <laughs> That's worse. Well, do you think it's worse with the 57th? Yeah. Fine. I'll change it to 58th if you really want to be a, you know, a, <laughs> dick. <laughs> um, a dick about it. Uh, um, 57th pick. Do you take, do you take Brad Beal? You have one trade left to make. Yeah, I know, but then I'm just going to get stuck with all this other stuff. So, um, uh, 58. Yeah, all right. I'll keep him. I'll give him a shot. Um, I think, like, if you can get 20 points per game from, like, a f player in the 50s, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just not sure how it's all going to work with KD and Book because we all know that Bill's, uh, Bill's whole fantasy value is basically from how many points he was able to score in that season uh, two years ago. With Washington, he had good free throw percentages on good amount of shots there from the line. His steals were actually really high uh, that year, which is kind of what bumped him up a fair amount. And also his assists were all right. I just don't know if he has that. It, it's There's only one ball and three players from Phoenix all need to have the ball in their hands. So, And I think Beal's the one that misses out a little bit. But if he gets a bit of run through the second unit, that's when Booker and KD rest or however they're going to do it. I can definitely see him being able to shot chuck a fair amount. And, um, yeah, hopefully he can get about 20 points per game and I'll take him there at 58 or whatever the hell it was. You can have him at 58. I'll give I'll give you a bump one. Yeah, it's worth it. Like, it, this is a player that can be top 30. So if I can take him that's in right. the 50s, I'll take that upside swing. Let's let's put it in perspective. You're picking up a potential late fifth round, early sixth round pick with someone that shoots 50 from the field, 84 from the line, averages 23 points, and does a bit of everything. I, I, yeah, again, there. Mick. Though, but there's only one ball. Like, are we saying that Beal's going to take that's, food off of KD and Booker's plate? I don't see yeah, that. I see yeah, Beal yeah. being the one that's got to step back. Not bad. And but I not like if they if they sag off KD. Oh, sorry, sag off Beal to play. Tied a D on Durant and Booker, he may get even more open shots here. I agree with that, but Book, like Beal's not. Everyone thinks Beal's an amazing three-point shooter, but Beal's like 
like he gets more mid ranges than he does threes. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, yeah, I just want to see how it's going to work with with them all there in Phoenix. But yeah, I, I don't know. I think Bill's the one that takes the hit most out of Book and KD because I can see Book playing point guard. You know, like I can see Book's assists coming up, but I'm just not sure about where Bill's role is going to be on this team. I see it very much as a situation where he's just a new CP3. He's just wearing like the oh, same number. Yeah. Like it's just, I, I see very similar role because there's that's the system that they're playing in. Like it might be a new system, sure. Like with Monty being gone, I get that. Last year was it like an outlier for the guy. Like a 500 from the field for Brad Beal, that was just like his career high in field goal percentage. If he could get some of that efficiency, I reckon you're spot on there, Mick. If if, if Durant and Booker are getting some of that attention, I reckon you're spot on. He can get better looks, and that's where his efficiency can creep up. He hits his free throws, as you said, at a really good clip. I reckon eighteen. I reckon eighteen to twenty points a game tops. I reckon he can get over six assists a game. Kingy, what do you like about? Do you like Beal this season? Not like him in the new situation in Phoenix. Uh, I think in this range, it's fine. Um, I think he gets to twenty a game. The Suns have already said that they're going to use Beal as the point guard, uh, not Booker. Yep. Well, not all the time. It's not just going to be his book. Here you go, um, Booker. You run the show. They've already said that Beal will um, adopt that role. So, yeah. Look, I think six assists, um, close to a steal. Uh, as you said, he isn't a great three point shooter. Um, yep. I think that's a bit of a a mirage or, or not even a mirage because he's never done it, but people think he's a three point shooter um, yeah. where he's, yeah. he's really not. Um, but uh, look, and look, I mean, Kevin Durant's going to miss 30 games. <laughs> he always does. Um, yeah. So, and well, we could say I mean, that about I, Bill, though. you could, you could. Um, and that, I mean, I know they've added depth. They've got a better roster than they had last year, but they haven't added a lot of scoring. So they still mm. need Beal to get points. Um, they've yeah, got yeah. they've got Durant, they've got Booker, but you need to score 100, 110 points to win. It's not going to be yeah. Josh Kogi or Yuta Watanabe <laughs> or these guys scoring. Yeah. So I think Beal still gets 20. So I think in this range, I mean, he was 50, 50-ish last season, mid-50, mm-hmm. something yep. like that. So um, it's about the same range. I don't think there's much upside, yeah. but but no. I think he's pretty safe. Like I think his floor is pretty safe around top 50. Yeah, that's as safe as houses pick. Let's see if I can get a bit of a riskier one. Off the board. Here we go. Oh, oh no, no, no. Oh, Jesus. thought I was going to get Josh Giddy. <laughs> I was getting happy for a second there. No, I've got Brucey Brown uh, with my pick that's come out there. Uh, I have Brucey Brown down here at 121. And I am absolutely taking Bruce Brown with the 121st pick this season. I love what he brings to the table. I love the hustle stats of the guy. He doesn't hurt me anywhere. At 120, a guy who has upside on a new team, I promised – I mean, we did the Indiana pod, Skitty. He's basically gone there after winning a ring with the Nuggets, and they've said, look, we'll give you more. Like, you just – more money, more of a role. He gets to work off Tyrese Halliburton. Hasn't Tyrese just been exceptional for Team USA in all those workouts? Like, he's probably going to take his game up a level, and the beneficiaries are, that, are going to be that supporting cast in Indiana. And namely, I see that being Bruce Brown as a massive – I, th- I see him as a steal at 121, so I'm 100% taking uh, Bruce Brown there at 120. Mm-hmm. I'm going to keep him. Yep. No vetoes? No. I think that's a good All range right. for him, though. Like, if he gets the if he gets the start and the a bulk share of the minutes over Matherin and Hill, then it can be good because he's as long as he's in the right system. We've seen like you know how he went in Brooklyn and how he went in Denver. So um, yeah, I think it's it's a fair. It's a fair spot to take him, granted that he could return the assist, rebounds, uh, and defensive stats. Yeah, and also I've run out of trades, so I'm cooked either way. <laughs> so I might sound like I'm selling it, but I'm just really stuck with no matter who I get right about now. And also I just hey, think Kingy, he's one of the most... If we get John Morant, we're just going to ship him straight over to G as soon as he has no trades and vetoes, yeah? Sounds good. <laughs> You don't know what pick I've given him. Mick's like, Mick, Mick and I have cooked ourselves. We've, we've done our vetoes, Mick. <laughs> How are you feeling about what's coming your way? Oh, I can't wait. I need a team. <laughs> you do need a team. You've only got, you only got Ant at heart. This one's for you, Kingy. Brandon Miller. Didn't you say before you, you didn't have... want him? I'm not he vetoing. Gets... I'll just be clear. <laughs> Don't oh, send you him see, my way, Kingy, or it's a veto back to you. 
<laughs> now I just want to make now I just want to make up an ADP for him. Just <laughs> um, Kingy, I've got him here as 130th on the season. Uh, with the 130th pick, do you take Brandon Miller for the Charlotte Hornets? Who's this You've on? got two oh, trades the- left, by the way, and you need to you need to make a move on trades. Oh, am I on the board? Am I? I wasn't. Even yeah, don't send him my way. Uh, I will be trading him. Um, <laughs> okay. And who? Who? What are the rosters looking like so far? You've got Mick with two players, Josh Hart and uh, Ant Edwards. You got Jake with uh, Derek White, Benedict Matherin, Brad Beal, and I've got Luca, Bruce right. Brown, and Paolo Bencaro. And you've got Jabari Smith Jr., Chet Holgren, and Jay Williams. Well, we're going to go. We're going to go to the horse because he's only got two. So now he has right. three. He now kind. he has three. How, how kind. L- lucky he's going to average 50 points, 20 boards, and 15 assists. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, congratulations then. Thank the you. <laughs> Thank you. He's got, to, he's got to cook. You're a Charlotte Hornets fan. Mick, we did the pod. We did the pod yeah, on the did. Charlotte Hornets. Yeah. What, do you, what do you think of his upside is this for this season? What, what do you think his potential uh, is there in Charlotte? Yeah. Uh, Big upside defensively. I think he's still a work in progress offensively. So with uh, Lamelo, when Bridges comes back, that'll be more his style, third or fourth option in the offense. I anticipate he'll average 10, 11 points a game, maybe one steal, 1.2 steals, near nearly a block a game. He's quite long. Uh, so from a defensive point of view, he I anticipate that he'll give us some good stats, but offensively work in progress. 130, what's that? 11th round-ish. Yeah, yeah. he's going deep in there. Yeah. him, yeah. All right, done. Well, he's with you, and that means it's actually back to your pick. And because he's just traded that, whoever you land right now automatically by default goes to Kingy. Okay. Hopefully it's Jar. It's Jar! <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's Jar Morant. You got it. You called it out. And Jar automatically goes to you. And on this draft, he is at the 60th pick. Kingy, you said you didn't want Jar. You've got him no matter what. At pick yep. 60, this just some numbers. Like the guy never plays the full season to start with. Like he has never played a full season in the NBA, not even over 80 games. He finished last season as 56. He did that in 61 games. He's basically coming back and qualifies for 61 games. So if he plays the same basketball he did last year, he's basically returning you the same value. He profiles as a better points league guy, but Jar at 60, will you take that? Well, I have to, but... Uh, but if you're drafting, would you take him? But if I'm drafting, um, it's about right. I think about, it's maybe a fraction high for me, 60. I'd probably rather get him around later, but look, that's okay. I mean, my team, I need points. Um because I've got, what, Chet, Jabari, and J-Dub, and they're not going to score. So at least I'm getting a scorer. I'm getting some assists. So in terms of build, if I'm not punting or not going in with a, a specific punt, he, f- he fits quite well because he'll give me those guard stats. Um, he's pretty efficient for a point guard because he doesn't take a lot of threes. Uh, turnovers, I don't care about turnovers. So, um, yeah, no, look, I'm, I'm okay with it. It's not, it's not the worst... Pick, it's not a Matherin. It, it's not, it's not, yeah. uh, yeah, yeah. So it's not a, a Brandon Miller. So <laughs> better, it's a better it's, than it's, that. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you won that trade for 100%. So that means it's over to you, Skitty. Uh, and you've got Skitty. Yeah, you got traded okay. Matherin. No, I didn't. You got Matherin. Yeah, and I traded him to you. Then I would have vetoed that. Oh, well, too bad. He's on your team. Fucking hell. Not fun. He's making up rules as he goes. No, I, I got you already down as Matherin. You didn't trade him. I put you down there as Matherin. I oh, didn't get Matherin. Did yeah, I get yeah. Matherin? Yeah. All right, fine. I'll get. I'll take Matherin. I'll take. Oh, so I got Matherin. So that means no matter what, then you get this guy. I'll put Benedict on my team. I'll give him the eggs. And you've just picked up Scoot Henderson. Now, right, do eh? you take or trade Scoot with the 70th yep. pick this year? 70th? Nah, I traded. 70th. You trade him? Yeah, I, I mean, this look, is your last trade. Students, who you send him to? Yeah, I'll send him to. Um, well, I know Kingy still got a a golden ticket. Uh, nah, yeah, I'll, I'll give him to the big horse. Actually, I'll get him. You on to the big horse? 
Yeah, see, so look, I, I'd be down with Scoot at uh, <laughs> 70. Might be just like a touch high if Dame wasn't there. I mean, uh, he profiles really, really well, and obviously he's already played against um, grown men in the G League. Um, yep. So, uh, and obviously he, he can score. He can get the mid-range going really nicely. He's good finishing. He's good with both hands. Uh, he has developed his three-point shot as well. Good pass vision. Uh, obviously super athlete. Uh, with that great wingspan as well, so I could see him like being a great source of assists, rebounds, uh, point, or not like out of position rebounds, sorry, and some steals. Um, but just with the uncertainty where Dame, if he's going, if he isn't going, whatever it is, Portland are happy to say that we'll just you know we'll have it as we'll take it as long as it takes. Um, I think you know this could go till the trade deadline, um, and then we've missed half a year of scooting. What's the damn point? So. If there was more certainty, yeah, I'd be happy with taking him around. Like, it maybe is t- a touch early, but I'd be happy with it around 70. But I don't see it this high with the possibility of Dame still there and playing. So I'll trade him off to the horse. Mate, you're starting to shape up with some of the younger fellas there. you got uh, Ant-Man, Brandon Miller, and Scoot Henderson. Horsey, that's your team. Yeah, what tank- do you think of that yeah, so far? D- Dynasty League, I'm tanking, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> Um, this really has become a dynasty team for you, mate, hasn't yeah, it? Scooty McNuggets, he's, he's, he's thick. Uh, if Willard gets moved on, I, I think 70 is probably about right. Uh, yeah. And I can't really say much more because I can't move him on. So he's with me. <laughs> yeah, you and, I, you and I are in the same boat. And this is mine now. I've got – there's two more Beatos out there. And I've hey, just spun up someone who I wanted uh, – yes, sir. I've got Cade. Do you know what spin? Scoot's actual name is? What is it? No. It's actually Sterling. Oh, ah. yes, yeah, Sterling. Yeah. Why would you Sterling call yourself Henderson. Sterling? <laughs> what a man. He's that's on even, my team. That's, uh, well, he is on your team. You've got, this, you've got the most Sterling <laughs> reputation, the most Sterling bloke, and I've spun up Cade Cunningham. Now, I can't do anything with him unless someone takes him. I've got Cade here as the 38 I'll take pick. Him. I'll take him. This is your veto? Yeah, give me. This is your veto? All right, yeah, that's I'll it. I'll take him. Yeah. I veto Damn that you. veto. Can I do that? <laughs> oh, you <laughs> no, can. You can. Off. You can. No, you can. He can veto your veto. He can. He can veto your veto. Well, I've got a veto. veto a veto. More than you tell me I can't do nah, it. Nah, I'm, I'm joking. Nah, Kingy can't do it. <laughs> Kingy can't veto a veto. No, once veto, he was first in, first serve. You're taking Cade Cunningham. I'm gutted. I drafted Cade last season. He went down injured. I had to salvage it. Um, I want good things for him this year. Skitty, why are you taking him so quickly? What do you like for Cade this year? What, what, I didn't even hear what pick you said. I no. just know that I... Seven. Pick seven? <laughs> pick seven. <laughs> Shit. Pick May have seven. Got there. <laughs> seven. No, uh, I said you could take him at the 32nd pick. I was tossing up oh, between yeah, 32nd easily. and 38. 100%. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm... Yeah. It's Cade's team in Detroit. He can get you. He's going to get points. No worries. Uh, if the, you know the three point percentage, I know was shit ass last year when he before he got injured, but um, yeah, that he's always been a good shooter coming up through college and everything. He can get uh, good rebounds from the point guard guard position, and it's going to be he's going to be the one getting the assist. I don't think Jaden Ivey is going to be. I know he needs the ball in his hand, but I think it's still going to be Cade's team. Um, yeah, so it's all about Cade. I'm in on Cade. Um, I'll have him anywhere um, around, like, you know, the mid-second round. Absolutely. I'll still take that flyer on him, I think. As long as they don't stuff it up. It is Detroit, and there is a chance that they may start James Wiseman next to Jalen Duran or Marvin Bagley or something like that. God, let's hope that Dwayne Casey bullshit is out of there and Monty Williams can bring in a good... Solid system where Detroit can actually flourish and it's going to be centered around Cade and it's going to be beautiful to watch until they stuff it up because they're Detroit. Kingy, you were very quick to want him as well there, mate. You really like what's in store for Cade Cunningham this season? Yes. Uh, yeah, I may not come back on the show after that. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, I, I am uh, very high. Um, I think... Probably too high. Um, I think if I have any sort of influence at all over the fantasy landscape, I'm going to push his ADP up because I'm <laughs> I'm happy to take him inside the top thirty. Um, yeah, I, I just really like what he can do. I think he, he brings you all the stats. 
I think his defence will be better. I think he'll be over a steal a game. Um, percentages should be better. He's been killing it for for Team USA. Um, Detroit don't have a stupid coach anymore. They've actually got a good coach. So their rotation should make sense now, hopefully. So, yeah, no, I look, I, I'm all aboard Cade Cunningham um, here and, and a bit annoyed. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> So, so Horsey, you um, you're a big fan of guys like Cade Cunningham and team. What do you love about these like masters who are also jacks of all trades? Like you're you're a big fan yeah. picking these up in your draft. Yep, uh, just someone that can do everything: boards, assists, steals. Good facilitator can shoot the ball from outside. Not a bad free throw shooter. Good field goal percentage. If he stays healthy, I anticipate him being a top twenty guy. Talking about top 20 guys, we'll touch off, we'll finish up this with some news at the end on the talking point, but that does fall to my spin on this bad boy here. Um, I've, this is my last guy, no matter what. Oh, Huge. Shit, man. I've had some. Yeah, I've got There's him, one golden veto left, I think. There's, yeah, there is one golden. It's, it's, yeah, it's a golden veto, but he may not want it at this one. Victor Wembanyama has been going all over the shop, and the more hype there is behind him, he's dropped down his ADP considerably just with the name. I'm going with two early drafts of him at 17th, and I would have oh. golden vetoed. I would have, I would have, I would not have taken this at 17. So I've got Victor Wembanyama on the 17th pick overall, and I would not take <laughs> him there at the 17th. What? 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 I don't. I don't I'm, look. <laughs> yeah. I don't want that. Like pair him, pair him with Chet. Do everyone's wet dream. <laughs> <laughs> make it, make it so, Kingy. Please take him on my team. Have I got? But there's a. I still only have three players on my team. Is that right, or do I have? No, nah, you've now? got four. You've got four. You got pick. You picked up Jar. So you got Jar. Oh, Jar. Jabar, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Chet and Jabari Smith Jr. If I keep him, my team is Eggs Benedict, Victor Wenbanyama, Bruce Brown, Luka Doncic, and Paolo Banquero. Mick currently has Josh Hart, Anthony Edwards, Brandon Miller, Scoot Henderson, and Jake has Derek White, Brad Beal, and Cade Cunningham. Oh, I don't know. I mean, it, it's too high. It's too high. <laughs> 17 is too high. Uh, but, I mean, having him and Chet on the same team is going to be a lot of fun. Um, oh, yeah. But that would mean if I, if I veto it, I've then got to – well, I've got to trade my next two picks – Anyway, pretty much, yeah, um, you have a whole team. pretty much, and I've got a veto to get someone, and I don't want Giannis, and I don't want KD. I'm just looking at the <laughs> options on the board, and I don't this think I want to thing. veto any of them except for maybe Giddy. Uh, yeah, and that would give me three OKC players, <laughs> um, as well. Uh, no, look, I'm gonna let you have Wemby at 17. Well, that too feels high. my too loss. That's too high. It's too high for me, Mick. You love, uh, you love it. You love a young boy potential. That's too high. Where do you reckon Hang he might fall at the end of the day? <laughs> all of you, all of you playing at home. That is very PG rated. It is. Um, no, no, because no, you've taken flies. Who have drafted? You love looking at. You yeah. love taking rookies and filling them in. Yeah. Like he's obviously the biggest rookie we've had in the league in a decade. Where do you think he yep. might go, or what value do you reckon he'll return at the end of the day? Oh, I still think Chet will have bigger value at the end of the season than what Chet uh, than what Wemby will. I think Chet, Rookie of the Year, I think he'll play more games. San Antonio is still sold on tanking. or They don't, they don't have a very strong roster, so I don't anticipate him playing, what, 60, 70 games. I think it'll be more closer to 50. Chet, however, he'll play most of the season. For me, I like games in the bank, points on the board, so I'm picking Chet over Wemby. Yeah, solid pick. Thank you very much for uh, saddling me with him, which means it comes back to you, Kingy, for your next one. No golden vetoes left, so you get this bloke and you get one of the ones you didn't want to fill your last spot <laughs> unless you veto it and you direct trade it to somebody trade. else. Well, I have a oh, trade, yeah. don't I? You I do. Trade, you do have a trade. You've got to make two trades. You've got to make two yeah, trades. I do. What so I'm trading. Okay? It doesn't matter. Well, I'm going to tell you what you say, dude. <laughs> <You're trying. laughs> I was giving you Giannis with the eighth pick. Yeah, no, not even close. I'll trade him. <laughs> not even close. He's trading. Do you reckon he'll ever return the? So, do you reckon he'll return first round value this year, returning to where he previously was? Because last year was a considerable drop off. Do you think he's going to be nudging? Let's say even top fifteen, top sixteen value. Can Giannis get back there this year? 
Uh, he can if you're punting. Um, yeah, in a certain <laughs> build, yes, absolutely. But I just think he's probably only going to play 60 games. His knee thing is not going away. Yeah. He's had surgery. Yeah. Um, it's it's not really per game. It's just I think he's just not going to be healthy enough to play a full season. And the Bucks don't really need him to. Like they're, they're good enough that they can just sit him out um, sporadically and sort of manage his, his minutes a little bit. So, mm-hmm. yeah, for me, no, thank you. So you've got to route him either to Skiddy or to Mick. Uh, let's go to Who Skiddy. wants him, boys? Fuck! Skiddy wants him. <laughs> just for that. You are just for that reaction. Oh, that's just not up. needed on my team at all. That just, like my team was looking all right on buddy, like percentages wise and everything. I was happy that I had K- this is because I took Kate off you, isn't it? Uh pretty much. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. So, look, this is where we're... Cheers to that. You oh, have, we've only got a couple of blokes left on the uh, on the board. Two of them have got to go to – one of them has got to go to Skitty. One of them has got to go to Mick, and one of them has got to go. This next one up is actually Mick's pick. Uh, he can't trade it. There is only one veto left on the board, uh, which is Kingies. <laughs> so, Mick, let's find out who you would get on this one. I've got all the other rookies. Give me Oscar. Hey. <laughs> Joshua. Joshua, our friend Joshua. Joshua Giddy, are you taking him this year with the 70th pick overall in your draft, Mick? Just tell us you can keep you, you can keep him. Are you taking yeah. him at 70? I'll I'll ask you this. Does a bear mm-hmm. shit in the woods? Bloody it's got own. nowhere else to, so absolutely it does. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, vetoing. Kingy, Kingy, what? You oh, you, 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 oh, oh, no. Kingy. But he's the only guy. On, he's the only guy on the board I want. So, yeah. So, what does that mean for me? It means you don't get giddy. <laughs> no, don't do that to the horsey. No, that's all right. Give me, give me Oz, Oscar. Whatever Oscar. his name is. Oscar. <laughs> oh, the horse. <laughs> Dunny again, Kingy. What do you love so much about Giddy at the seventieth pick this year, mate? Uh, I don't know really. Um, I, I can't hear you, Kingy. What? 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 It, Nothing. It gives me. It, it gives to me, me three <laughs> three OKC players, which is fun. Yeah, um, it is. Oh, look! I just uh, he's just uh, he's just a good player. A little bit like he's sort of like a Cade, but without the points. Mm. So he'll get assists, he'll get rebounds, he'll get some defensive stats. His three-point shot looked a lot better last year. Um, did. So he's sort of trending in the right direction there. The Thunder, they're a team, they're going to want to make the playoffs. So he's going to play. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah. And yeah. like I said, my I have to trade my next pick. Uh, and he was the only guy left on the board that I wanted. Yeah. So <laughs> no pretty problem. much. So you've taken that one, which means automatically the default here is to you, Ski, and you've Wait, used I have your to vote. I so... my pick, though, don't I? No, no, you absolutely. No? Hey, no, yes. No. This lands with you. This is an automatic gimme. This is a layout for you because of all the other trades that have happened. You're taking KD. <laughs> Let's talk to the fact right there uh, that at the tenth pick. Now I've been on the record of saying yep. I don't see him as first round value, but do you take him I there? Know. Yep. You do? I take KD Why? there. Yep. I, as we were doing the uh, the mock draft that we did the other day, everyone should go check that out from our later pods. Um, and KD went at eleven, I believe it was. Um, mm. Sabonis so going ahead of him, which was kind of like oh, I'm not sure, but I still think eleven, ten, nine, like that's KD's kind of range. I know he probably won't. He they may take their foot off the gas a little bit with. Book and Bill there and everything like that. Oh, sure, I already have Bill on my team, don't I? Oh, well. You do. Um, it's still KD though. This is we're talking about one of the best players in the world, and when he plays, he's still going to get. Um, he's still going to get these points. He's still going to go higher field goal percentage. No one can block that mid range shot. All right, he's unstoppable in the mid. Um, he's got a good three pointer. It can, you know, if you sag off KD, then you know he can probably get the assist going to Book and. Um, Beal as well with a bit of Aiton if he stays there. So, as I said, taking one of the best players in the world at ten, I'm I'm happy to I'm happy to do that. And I'm pretty sure his defensive stats came up last year. If I'm not 
mistaken, did I? What do you have? One point four blocks. I mean, geez, that's that's bloody nice. Yeah. So, you know, anything over that one block per game, yeah, absolutely. So, um, I'm happy with KD at ten. Um, yeah, so no worries there. Which means you got him, Mick. Your heart's desire. You've picked up Oscar. I've still got a You've trade left, up... don't I? No. No one oh, else has do. a spot, mate. No one else has a spot. So it's by it's by virtue he has to land yeah, but, with you to fill out um, your roster. Yeah, but I'm trading him to Kingy for Josh Giddy. But uh, this is my spin. <laughs> <laughs> and this I'm trading him to you. Fine, I'm tanking. Oh, yeah. I actually like Take this it. guy from a defensive point of view. Like he's yeah, really, really long. Mm. Yeah. And I, I think he'll be when you're talking about rookies, probably top three. Uh, statistically in the rookie class this year. Defensively, really, really strong. Yeah. Look, Defensively, a, he could be a top three rookie, yeah. Yeah, like this is a guy, like his numbers coming out of um, overtime elite were just absolutely insane. Like this was a guy that got you like ridiculous amount of blocks, ridiculous amount of steals, assists, rebounds, not great points or three-point shooting, but like those defensive stats are unheard of. And he was even showing a fair amount of it as well in – the summer league as well. Like, so if you look at it in the G league translation, then to the summer league, I mean, if it can just keep going that next step and he can get those steals and blocks him and his brother, like mm-hmm. obviously he has more Avenue to minutes than a men does in Houston. Cause I mean, can anyone else see him being the starting small forward in Detroit? I can. Well, okay. yeah, I can too. There is a bit of early Intel though, that Detroit want to just rest him to start. They don't want to just gear it up immediately with him. So that's where I'm interested to see what they do, that opening night lineup. Like he's gone in a lot of drafts anywhere. I've got him in our one here at 120th, which I think could be too early if he could slide into the 130s, 140s. I'd like that. I know, Kingy, you did a draft. He went off the board at, what was that, 140 something you said? I think he went off the board. Yeah, 147 in another one. Um, He's got the X rank there, Skitty. What have you got his X rank there on Yahoo and his rank there? I know you had it up when we were talking about it. Yes, so his X ranks on Yahoo is 542 and his ranks 243. So it's just. Yeah, I see it. Shot. They're just making numbers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they're making. (laughs) Mick, how would you like the 500th best player in the NBA on your team this season? Because you've got him in the Oscar. Yeah. Oh, I'd love him. I think. Look at my team. I've got Brandon Miller, I've got Scoot Henderson. (laughs) I've basically got the uh, all-star rookie team, haven't I? <laughs> yeah, they're pretty much playing for Jerry West of the all-star weekend. Finishing up our teams then, this is how it shakes out. With the first pick overall in trades, Mick, you've got Josh Hart, Ann Edwards, Brandon Miller, Scoot Henderson, and Asar Thompson. Skitty, you've got Derek White, uh, Brad Beal, Cade Cunningham, Giannis, and KD. Kingy, you've got Jabari Smith Jr. You've got Ja Morant. But then you've got three OKC lads in Josh Giddy, uh, Jalen Williams, and Chet Holgren. And I'm actually not so I'm I'm not too not fussed on this. Uh, I got I ended up with Paolo Bancaro, Luca, uh, Brucey Brown, uh, Benedict Matherin, and Victor Wenbanyama on my team. And guys, that's our draft. That's been Wheeler Draft Kingy. You can check him out on FBI Basketball and follow him on all of the things at Adam King Ninety Win. Thanks so much, brother. No worries. That was good. A uh, bit of fun. Good to do it. I do so many mock drafts and normal sort of drafts. It's good to shake it up and, and have some fun and uh, and send some shit players to other managers. <laughs> <laughs> right. Can you go do that in the mock one? Filthy, thank you so much, Skitty. And thank you so much to you, Mr. Big Horse. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Guys, Enjoy your drinks on your four and ones. On, yep, on behalf of the uh, Standard Squeeze, thank you for joining mm-hmm. us, guys. Jump on the website, Insight15. Bang that code in, you get 15% off all products courtesy of the good guys at the Standard Squeeze. Yeah, Ash and the team, they're absolute legends. Thanks so much. It's, Father's Day is around the corner. This is the time to jump oh, on yeah. and make the most of that. Like 100%, all of their products are fantastic for those dads who love camping, getting out about or the early morning coffee run. You can do all of that with thanks to the wonderful products over at Standard Squeeze, including, boys, hold up your foreign ones. Those, they're coolers. They've got, they've got beers in them. They've got coffee in them. They've got drinks in them. They've got thermos. They're thermoses. They're everything you need 
and more. I have been at MBA Wiz. That is your super coach right there, Big Horse, Filthy IFS, and our good friend. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Adam King. Check him out on all the socials at Adam King 91 and check us out at Insight F Sports. Take care, Hoopers. <laughs>